Hi, I'm Keystone's Director of Education at Ed Richardson, and today I'm going to talk to Greg McElhinney about the STEP maths exams. Greg is a first class graduate from Imperial in Maths, and he's taught almost 7,000 hours of predominantly A level STEP and Matt Maths. So, what Greg doesn't know about maths isn't probably worth knowing. Greg, can we start by you explaining what is the STEP maths and what does STEP maths uh, assess? So step maths is the entrance exam used primarily by Cambridge and some other universities uh, to test aptitude for maths. Um, so that means it's not necessarily just um, testing content knowledge, um, but it's also going to be testing kind of how far can you stretch that knowledge by doing problem solving questions on uh, topics, but stretching it to a very high difficulty level, typically. And, and why is step maths used? Is it that A-level and IB-level maths aren't enough for these universities? In a sense, yes. Um, I guess if you get a top grade, like a grade seven in the IB or an A-star in A-level, maths and further maths, that's pretty good. But for Cambridge maths, that wouldn't be enough to guarantee that you're like a strong enough candidate for the course. So this is like a step further, if you pardon the pun, to just uh, check that you're really, really up there and can deal with the hard maths they're going to throw at you at uni. It's great to see that mathematicians love a pun too. Um, let's focus on the exam and its structure. So how is it structured and, and how difficult is it? You've suggested that it goes well beyond A-level and IB-level maths. Yeah, so the exam structured, uh, it has 13 questions. Um, there will be a pure section with, um, and that's that contains the most questions. Then there'll be a shorter mechanics section and shorter stats section as well. Um, you choose uh, which questions you want to do. So you don't do all the questions on paper. And uh, each question is marked out of 20. And the top six uh, marks that you score uh, for the questions you choose are used. So you could attempt eight. That would be a very bad idea. But you wouldn't get any marks for the, the two that you scored at least in, for instance. And you say that's a bad idea because essentially that would just take too much time? Yeah. So um, usually you might run out of time uh, when trying to do six questions even. So... Uh, a rule of thumb is if you can completely finish four questions, you've done quite well. Um, often what will happen is you'll get to a certain point and you can't do the last part of the question. Mm -hmm. um, they try and award more marks for the later parts of the question to really push people to try and finish the questions, possibly meaning you run out of time on the later questions. But um, it's also fine if you get like halfway through each question leave out the last book because you can't do it and then move on and do six questions that way. Uh, what you don't want to happen is that you can't finish these six questions. Like a few of them are just false starts after maybe the very first start, uh, very first part of the question. And then you have to do like a seventh or eighth question. Got it. So it really is quality over quantity. Yeah. Okay. So so what is a good score in, in, in the step? So steps graded from S, one, two, three, and, and due. Um, if you get an S, that's outstanding. That's more than enough for Cambridge. A one is what Cambridge will typically ask for. And um, step is split into multiple papers, so you need to get a one in each. Um, a grade two is still very strong. And it's often what the other universities, other than Cambridge, will ask for um though when they ask for grades they're usually as an alternative to something else so you could get more a stars in your a levels or you could get less grades um in your a levels but then also get a grade two and step or something like that um as a rough guide in terms of grading it's going to be different obviously based on the paper and grade boundaries but um if you get say uh, com four questions completely correct. That's probably about um, a grade one. Um, and if you get three questions completely correct, that's probably about a grade two. Uh, but then you can also, like, there's different variations on that. You could do three completely correct and then 
three partial starts, that would probably be a high one, for instance. Okay, that makes sense. So what are your top tips then for preparation? Um, I would make sure that your content knowledge is completely up to scratch first, because if they ask on something that is you, you're not completely sure on, you, and it's an easy question for other candidates, you're kind of missing out on attempting that question. You, you do a different question, obviously, if, you, if you're weak on that topic, but you're kind of missing out on some easy marks, and easy marks on step are few and far between. I would not neglect um, the stats and mechanics because they tend to be easier questions, in my opinion, apart from the first question on the paper, which is usually intentionally made the easiest to kind of lead you in. Um, yeah, they tend to be good ones, especially if you're doing like many mechanics or many stats modules and further maths. Um, and finally, just do lots of past paper practice. And are resources widely available? Uh, there is a thing called the STEP Support Program. This is uh, a, an official resource list from Cambridge that kind of walks you through it. You can actually start preparation for this in year 12, even though you sit STEP in, at the end of year 13. And they'll have things that are in year 12, guided towards the year 12 syllabus, and then year 13, um, going towards like maths and further maths, the, the year 13 topics. Great. Thank you very much, Greg, for your sound and sage advice. And hopefully that's helpful for the students out there. Thanks very much.